Hello, homemakers, and welcome back to another edition of Words from a Squeaky Desk. I don't really know what we're calling this. Maybe it'll evolve in time. I'm gonna keep my scarf on today. I've got the fan blowing on hot, so hopefully you can't hear that um, too loud, because it's freezing in here. Uh, but I've got a cup of coffee, so we should be fine, while I respond to a hand-selected few of the comments you dropped over the past couple of videos, which I believe was 204 and 205. Where are they? One sec. Recently, we spoke about two things. In 204, it was about what to do if your dough overproves and spills over the edge of the tins. And for those of you asking, it's a yeasted dough you can do that with. Sour dough, if it's gone too far, normally turns into a big sticky puddle. There's not a lot you can do about that. We spoke about that before in a video entitled 116 sourdough, what is over fermentation and when might it happen to you? Whole different ball game altogether. The dough in that scenario, as are most of the doughs that I do, are yeasty. And that's the same as 205. In 205 we spoke about reserving a piece of your dough and adding it to the next batch. That's a yeasted dough as well. And we'll come on to this in a minute as well because some of your questions are touching upon this. But both of them are yeasted doughs and things are slightly different with sourdough. One thing before we commence to let you know is that Bread Every Day, for those of you in the USA, is released on January the 17th, 2023, which is not that far away. If you want to pre-order your copy, you can do that on Amazon. America, what it's called, where you are. There's a link underneath if you want to pre-order it. January 17th, in your country. Isn't that mad? And it'll also be in shops. First comment is from Nancy Cuppy. Thank you, Nancy. On video 205 about reserving a piece of dough for your next batch to improve flavor and texture and color and everything. Can you do this with sourdough as well? Nancy, you're one of the hundreds of people that asked this question, can you do this with sourdough as well? And the point of the video is we are making a straight yeasted dough, start to finish, not like you'd make a normal loaf of bread. Mix it, knead it, rest it, shape it, rest it, bake it. That's the end of your process. Sourdough is a cycle rotation process where you always have something to carry over to the next batch, right? So in 205, we're talking about keeping a bit of your straight yeasted dough back. And then when you do your next batch, adding that in, so therefore carrying something over from the last batch every single time, from one batch to the next batch to the next. When you make sourdough, you're pretty much doing that anyway with your sourdough starter. So then in keeping a piece of dough behind, it kind of seems a little bit redundant because um, the principle of doing it with a yeasted dough is to improve your yeasted dough, um, not to make it sourdough. Uh, but to find some kind of middle ground where your yeasted dough improves. Whereas the principle of your sourdough process is pretty much that anyway in the first place. And so no, I wouldn't do it for sourdough because you are kind of already doing it. Does that make sense? Loads of you asked this question. Uh, I hope that helps. But it is a nice way of improving the flavor of your yeasted bread using a similar principle that is already present in your sourdough bread. I hope that makes sense. Dave T1368, hello Dave, says Jack, great idea, actually, great idea Jack. So I sometimes add sourdough starter to my dough to add flavor if I have some spare. Good idea, pop a little bit of your sourdough starter in there. If anyone's doing a recipe with discard, what I never do, because it's weird. If you ever got some left over, pop it in your yeasted dough. Uh, be careful about the water balance because you might be introducing a little bit more moisture that way, I don't know. Um, we have to do some maths on it, but yeah, of course. Put some of that in there, improve the flavor of your yeasted dough bread as well. On the same theme, Linda Rodman, hiya Linda, says, what if it's two different kinds of bread? Can I put a bit of my milk bread dough aside and use it for my next challah or challah, depending on where you're from, if I say challah. Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, milk is a different thing, isn't it? It's a different beast, it's got dairy in it. Now you're talking about, you know, from my professional uh, chef background, I've got to think carefully about carrying over dairy. Um, bakers normally don't really care about stuff like this. So probably, yeah, it'd probably be okay. Like, I don't know. It's a tricky ball game with, with dairy involved. Truth be told, I'd probably do it. Uh, and if it smelt suspicious when I got it out of the fridge, well then I'd think about whether I would use it or not at that moment. But I think it'd probably be all right. But I wouldn't really care about mixing and matching breads up. 
you know, if I had a dough for like a rye bread, for example, and then the next day I wanted to make baguettes, um, then I would use the rye bread dough and I might just discover the best bread I've ever made in my entire life. William Harvey says, sounds a lot like what you do with sourdough. There you go, similar principle. You are carrying something over each time, improving, uh, theoretically, improving every time upon what you're doing with sourdough naturally within the process. David Powell says, you've got me wondering now, hmm, would there be any point in just adding a dollop of my rye base starter to a yeast bake? Might have a try. Yes, there would be point. Loads of flavor present in there flavor. You're not using it to puff up the dough in a yeasted dough. This is what some people call this like a hybrid dough. Although a hybrid dough I feel like it's kind of a cheats way of making sourdough. When you make your starter and you puff it up with yeast anyway. Which is totally the piece of point of making sourdough. The hybrid dough thing is weird. But what you're doing here is just using a bit of your starter to bring flavor and character to your yeasted bread that wasn't previously present. Just don't start calling it sourdough because the sourdough police come knocking on your door and say, oi, well, that's not real sourdough, mate. No, 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 no. Before we get on to the next one, let me take an opportunity to thank all the people that dropped super thanks this uh, last few weeks. Great, big, massive, heartfelt, thank you very much is. I go out to all of you for simply watching, but to those of you who dropped a super thanks, thank you very much. R Sims 42 Hazel Limage again, thank you very much. Sebastian uh, Molliman again, thank you. Beverly Evans, Kathleen Kepley. Sorry, Kathleen Kepley. L. Gee, DK, Evangeline Visser. Cara Lombard again, thank you very much. Marie Roper, Robot Devil. I did get to your comment and I read it. Thank you very much. Timothy Choban, Coco the Geeky Yogi. Mandy Hasler, Alan W. Brenda C, Cynthia Copeland, Michael John Rizzo, UE Internet. Palmcore, DJ Brian AZ, Hazel Limage again, thank you very much. Sarah Milan, maybe I should turn this into a rap. Mmm. Dipped our toe into poetry. Maybe the next one is like a full on rap. Christine Forsyth, Brian Anderton, Johnny D, Coco the Geeky Yogi again, thank you very much. Andrea Dayhant, Hazel Limage again, thank you. S, no wait, Five Yellow Frog Five, nice. Maybe that could be my rap name. Student 64, Evelyn Bunton. Jill Otterson, Coco the Geeky Yogi again, thank you very much, you're very, very kind. Cara Lombard again, Hazel Image again, thank you ever so much, you're very, very kind. It means a lot, it really does, thank you very much. Last comment from Adrian Hope says the following, thank you Adrian. Right now, putting that oven on a high setting for a fair old while could very well put people off if they're mindful of their fuel bill. Yeah, I hear that. So what's the economic way to get fresh home-baked bread in terms of fuel? Bake two loaves, four and freeze three? How crowded can that oven be? I feel like we recently did a video on this uh, topic completely. Did we? One sec, let's find out. Did we? There's nobody here, it's just me. Make bread but cheaper, video 196. That's got a few ideas in there, including baking your bread without preheating the oven. Uh, but one of the things I often do is make a big massive dough and I do bake four loaves at once. And the reason I know that is because we do that in class. You know, if, we're, if I'm hosting a class somewhere with limited oven space, well then we've got to get four loaves in one oven. That's what we always do. Four tinned loaves, two pounds, will fit inside a standard household oven. It will benefit each other from producing extra steam so it'll be better in terms of crust and stuff like that. But my freezer's always on, there's normally a gap for bread in it, so I always overproduce and freeze down the bread itself, uh, either sliced or unsliced. But watch video 196. There's loads of tips in there to help you save money or ideas of where you can kind of cut costs without compromising um, the bread. And I hope it helps, because I feel like we're all on the same boat on that page. Probably, mostly, I don't know. Um, thank you once again for being here. Thanks for your mail. Got this nice card the other day. It's really lovely. I love getting posts through the post. It's like the olden days. Oh, it's like we're living in the olden days. It's really lovely. Thank you, uh, as always, once again. Remember, USA date for Bread Every Day will be released on January 17th. It is on pre-order already. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your super thanks. Thanks to all patrons. Uh, you rock. And I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>